Tony, I, I got your message. What's the trouble here? Ben, our friends here, Powcheek and the Wexler brothers, are quitting the circus. Quitting? Mm -hmm. Oh, Powcheek, the circus needs you and the boys. How are we going to replace that white man die after years? Pains me to go, Ben. But as undisputed chief of the great Paiute tribe, I must gather together my wandering peoples at last and lead them home. It is my duty. Oh, what are you talking about? You know, you and the boys have spent half your life in one circus or another. True. But now I must answer a higher calling. There's, there's nothing we can do to make you change your mind. <clears throat> well, uh, perhaps we could delay the departure, give you time to break in a new act for a uh, small consideration in salary. <laughs> no, that, that wouldn't be fair to you, Pouchik. I mean, duty is duty. Well, good luck. Well, Clarence. Uh, Goodbye, friends. A uh, Pouchik, you won't get lost now, will you? You know, it's a pretty rough country out there if you don't know your way around. Lost? The great Pouchik? Not as long as I have the sun above, the long ridge, the gentle wind, and the bending mesquite to guide me. And then Mesky, huh? <laughs> oh, they'll be back as soon as they get over their noble ideas. A balloon act, Ben. I haven't yet, Tony. I wonder how that thing got here. Never mind that. Just take a look at what's in it. Gentlemen, it seems we have a lady in distress. It's not just standard. You can follow me, Ben. Hold your positions, please. Gentlemen. This balloon is fragile. It will be taken down as per my instructions. Is that clearly understood? What's a beautiful young lady like yourself doing in a balloon? Oh, it's flying. Oh, I say your bag busted at just the right time. It's not a grab bag. Obviously, I've had an accident in my balloon. I shall need the assistance of some of you men to help get it down safely. I'm ready to pay well. Ben, looks like you and I got ourselves a new job. <laughs> I would like to hire you, sir, and you, and you and you. Two dollars apiece. When the silk is lowered, not one square inch is to drop in the dirt. You know, I, uh... I bet that's a beautiful balloon when it's flying, Miss, uh... Cogswell. Katie Cogswell. Cogswell. You know, I've always been interested in balloons. How does this one work? On the principle of hot air. I'm sure you're familiar with that. You really got it today, Passion Flower. I wonder, sir, if you would permit these two gentlemen to go inside your hotel and to protect my balloon from souvenir hunters. I'm making an important trip and I still have some 1,500 miles to cover. Now, who has a wagon? I'm Tony Gentry, Miss Cogswell, at your service. I sure hate to see a pretty gal like you out here in the sun, the heat, and the dust. Why don't you sit on down in there in the shade, and I'll get your job done for you. You have a wagon? Uh, no, but there's going to be a full moon tonight. I can sure get a hold of one. And you know a nice, quiet place by a river. <clears throat> I sure do. <laughs> well, why don't you just go there and dunk yourself till you cool off? Look, mister, either you and your friend help out here, or just stay out of my way, please. You know, Tony, I think she's fallen in love with us. You, sir, 
When the balloon is down and folded, I'd like you to haul it to the nearest clearing. Could I impose upon you two gentlemen to go up on the roof and tie all the surplus silk? Uh, is there something my partner and I could do to help? Uh, yes. Go up on the ledge and give the other men a hand. Oh, no, thank you. We'll do this for free. You four men. Two on either side of the balloon when it's lowered. Now, since I don't know your names, I'll count you off by your positions, if I may. You, sir, are number one. Numbers four, five, and six will be first. I'll give the command. Now please grasp the silk. Numbers one and two, stand by. Lower away. Gently. Gently. This equipment's in bad shape. Yeah, the bag's ripped in at least a dozen places. What are your plans now? I was going to try another ascension today. But now that I've seen the damage, about all I can do is take it home and raise money for repairs before I can try again. Just what is it you're trying to do? Have you ever heard of General Cogswell? Yes, balloons, Civil War. Wasn't he the one that sold the idea of using balloons for spotting artillery? And he was successful in spite of the people who ridiculed him. He was my father. Oh, I see. What does that have to do with all he this? He was a pioneer in ballooning. Another one of my father's ideas was that balloon travel from west to east is practical. That's what I'm trying to prove. I was planning to reach St. Louis on this flight. But I'll try again until I do make it. Well, that's a pretty large order. Particularly for a young and attractive girl like yourself. I appreciated your help, mister, but I don't need your opinions. I happen to be one of the most experienced balloonists in this entire country. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have plans and arrangements to make. Now, wait, wait, wait. Uh, hold on a minute now. Um, just how much money do you think it would take to repair this? Thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. I had to throw most of my equipment and instruments overboard to lighten the load before I crashed. That's a lot of money. Is that going to be easy for you to raise? No. My father wasn't a wealthy man, but I'll raise it. Look, I can fix this equipment and buy the instrument you need for, say, uh, two months of your time. What are you talking about? You see, I own part of a circus. A female balloonist would be a sensation. You do an act for me and I do promise Do an act you... in a circus? That's right, and I promise that I'll get you the money to go on with your plan. No, thank you. I have no intention of becoming a sideshow freak. Yeah, well, uh... We got a lot of help with the show. Probably get this stuff repaired by tomorrow. Maybe you didn't hear me, but I have no intention of degrading my father's... Tomorrow? Yeah, it'll probably take you at least two months to haul this home, raise the money you need, make the necessary repairs. Circus. Well, no matter what you've heard, we're just like anyone else. Might even be 95 percent better than most. Are you uh, certain you can have this bag repaired by tomorrow? Certain. You can be doing your act the day after that. I need certain instruments. Well, there's a train to Kansas City. We can send a rush order. Driver. We'll go with these two gentlemen to the circus. What's this you're bringing in? Listen, Casey, I know we've uh, never spent any of our money without talking it over first. 
but... Uh... I know, but I'm beginning to think I'm ending up being a silent partner in this thing. No, no, it's not that, but... Um... All right, how much? Well, uh, $1,500. But it's for a top attraction. $1,500? You never asked me nothing about it? Well, Ben, I, I couldn't forgive you for that if you brought in the best act in the world. Unless it was a balloon act. <laughs> Word sure gets around fast, doesn't it? One of the boys rode in and told us about that balloon. I know you'd have it signed, sealed, and delivered for us. Look, we're going to have the publicity on this one. First, we're going to paint a great big sign on the side of that balloon. Now, you like that idea? Now, look at these three sheets here. Look. Read this, boy. This is going to do it. Hey. Thompson and Travis proudly present the world's one and only female balloon daredevil. Oh, I put an opening off for three days here so we can hit the public real hard on this act. Howdy. I'm Luke Turlock. This Katie Cogswell's ground man. They tell me she's around here someplace. Well, yeah, she's in back of the tent unloading her stuff. She's uh, joined our show. She what? Yeah, she's working up an act. Say, if you're her ground man, you're welcome to stick around if you want to. Oh, don't worry. I'll stick around all right. The day Katie Cogswell gives up her own work to join a circus. <laughs> That's one day I don't want to miss. Come on, boy. Hey, I don't like that guy's laugh. He makes me think we're being taken. Folks have been known to take money and then run off with it. Especially those who bring along their own transportation. You do have a contract with this girl, don't you? That was signed and sealed, Casey. Good. I don't mind if the circus sells all day, suckers. I just hate the idea of us ending up being one. Howdy, Miss Cogswell. Mr. Turlock. It went bad, huh? Main air control. Couldn't do a thing. Well, we'll get her next time. A person can't expect to make history the first try. I suppose you're right. What are you doing here? The bag's being fixed. But the fella said... Miss Cogswell, you haven't forgotten everything your dad said. Or what you believe in, too, have you? Of course not. But joining a circus. And just when the air conditions are perfect. You know, if you don't make that flight in the next few days, why, it's going to be years before anybody succeeds. There's been no change in plans. What do you mean? Let's just say there are certain obstacles which must be overcome first. You mean, uh, as soon as they fix the balloon, you're, you're running out, leaving them flat? Precisely. I don't find it funny, Mr. Turlock. I'm a pioneer, and sometimes a pioneer has to do things she's not very proud of. I've seen more accomplished here in two days than by the best balloon crews in Washington in five days. Uh, thank you. I think we have most of the equipment you asked for. This aneroid barometer. That tells how high I am. Yes, I know, but this one's calibrated to 15,000 feet. We're in the act, you're going to be tied to a rope only 500 feet long. Yes, I know. Some of the other items on this list, they look like they're more for a long distance flight than a local ascent. Well, that's true, but what if the rope should break? Up I'd go, I'd be in free flight. Without these instruments, I'd be in trouble. I need some protection. Hey, Ben, you know what I've done? I've ordered and bought every tube of 12 piece of lumber in this town. I know we can't afford it, but for this act, we're going to build bleachers all the way around that bloom. Oh, that is nice, Casey. Uh, Miss Cogswell, uh, she all right? She's happy? Uh, no trouble? Quit worrying. She's all set to do her act. Ben, she keeps sending these handbills back for me to redo over again. I just got a hunch that that woman is taller than her. No, I think she's just a perfectionist. What's all this paint for? That's for the biggest, most gigantic red TNT sign you've ever seen. We're going to put it on the side of that balloon. 
Oh, we're going all out for this one, partner. Come on, Ray. All right, Ray, come on in here. Off the balloon, gentlemen! Miss Cogwell, we don't want to mess your balloon up any more than you do. Well, just what is it you're trying to do, Mr. Thompson? We're getting ready to paint our sign on the side of the balloon. Well, you see it. Uh, you know, that is part of our bargain. Of course. All right, fellas, let's get started now. That is, uh, if your paint has the correct elasticity. Elast what? Elasticity? Ordinary paints harden, causing cracks and separations in the cloth fiber. I'm afraid, Mr. Thompson, yours is one of those kind of paints. You know, I thought something like that. This paint with the, the correct elasticity, is it, uh, is it hard to get? Oh, no. Wellers carries it. Wellers? It's a paint firm in New York. Oh, well, that's going to be right handy. All right, fellas, I guess we can forget the sign for now. Oh, by the way, I want to show you this. These are these uh, new handbills that we had drawn up here now. I think we got it this time. I added a couple of things for you, and then here's something we added for ourselves here. On opening day, Katie Cogswell is guaranteed to positively rise, mm -hmm. defying death and all the elements. How <laughs> do you like it? To positively rise is a split infinitive. Well, now, Miss Cogswell, we started splitting infinitives in the circus business when they first came out. It's bad grammar. But if we change that, we'll have to do this handbill all over again. Besides, I don't think there's many people out in this part of the country that would know the difference. I'd know the difference, Mr. Thompson. And you promised to do a handbill that was agreeable to me. That was also part of our bargain. Travis, we're not only getting the wool pulled over our eyes, we're being hung, drawn, quartered, and chopped up in the little bitty lamb chops. Casey, you've got to stop this worrying. Elasticity, splitting infinity, stalls, that's all they are. That girl has no idea appearing on our show. All she's interested in, taking that balloon and her sap back to St. Louis. And you know something? We're financing that trip. So come on. <laughs> Let's do something. I've got a thought. What? Let's lock her in a cage and beat her through the bars. <laughs> All right, Mr. Travis, come showtime. That girl's not here to put in an appearance. You know who's going to be behind the bars? Thompson and Travis. Only there won't be nobody there feeding us. <laughs> Stop worrying, Casey. She'll be there. How's it coming? I suppose you hear about the sign on the balloon. No, not me. You know, you haven't left this balloon for two days. I think it's time you took a breather. There's too much left to do. I think the boys will take good care of your balloon. Come on, come with me. I told you, I... Now look, you have a contract with the Thompson and Travis Circus, right? Well, that means I'm the boss. And I say you need a breather. Maybe you're right. I can't do much here till the bag's inflated, anyway. Good. Allow me. I'm glad we took the breather. It's nice here. Mr. Travis, may I ask you a personal question? Why, certainly, Miss Cogswell. Just how does a man who spends his time wandering about the wilderness with a circus menagerie know about something as complex as an aneroid barometer? You know, Miss Cogswell, some of our menagerie have even conquered reading and writing. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I deserve that. No, I, uh, I did some balloon work when I was in Europe. Oh, I see. Well, then, then you know how much more beautiful everything looks from up there. Oh, if only everyone could. Someday they will, though. Because someday there are going to be airports, just as we have seaports today. And 
flying will be just as natural to people as riding a horse. And they'll be able to go anywhere, all over this country, by balloon. Anywhere. <laughs> I guess you think I'm just dreaming. No. Well, I'm not. Because it will happen. You tell? No, I don't. Even if I did, there, there's nothing wrong with dreaming. Mr. Travis. Uh, do, you, do you think we could shorten that Ben? Ben. Just why do you wonder about the circus? Well, uh, maybe we have a dream of our own. <laughs> a circus, a dream? Katie, the circus is all a dream. Listen, you say you want to see airports out here. All right. I think you'll admit first you must have people. Look, look at it this way. The fact that our circus is putting on performances out here just might be taking a little of the rough edge off the West in the eyes of the people back East. Making them think, well, maybe the West is civilized. Well, they're coming now by the hundreds, but soon they'll be coming by the thousands. Maybe some of them will even arrive by your airports. Now, the bigger and the better the circus, with help of acts like yours, the issue it is for us to show the people back East that the West is not all shouting and shooting and... Yeah, am I, am I getting through to you? You, you want to go back, don't you? To work. as tight as a new corset, Miss Cogswell. <laughs> what I That's mean. That's fine, Mr. Sherlock. Anything wrong? No. No, looks just fine. I didn't mean the balloon. I meant you. Oh, I'm all right. I don't buy that. I know you too well. I talked to Ben. These circus people are fine people. They've got a dream, too. Maybe even as big as mine. Oh, it's Ben, is it? I don't know what Ben said to you, but I know what he did. What he did is worse than rips, rain, fire, lightning. Katie, he's got you thinking and talking. And act them like a woman. Katie, it's Ben. Yes? It's almost dinner time. I thought maybe you'd join me. Oh, thank you. Getting used to us yet? I'm beginning to. Well, we have quite a life. Sunshine and adventure, fresh air, insurmountable mountains, elephant stampedes. <laughs> You're quite a salesman. Well, I should be. The circus has a lot to sell. I think my balloon act means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's, it's unusual and it seems dangerous. It's the kind of acts that keep circuses in business. Then. I want to apologize for the way I acted in town, I mean. You don't have to. Tony and I were pretty fresh. Well, I've had a chance to find out you're... There are a lot of nice people here. I, uh, I hope you get to know us better. I'd like that. She'll be ready to go by morning. I'll uh, load your supplies aboard as soon as nobody's around. I may not be leaving. Gone that far, eh? Maybe. You giving up then? 
I didn't say that. It's just that... That Ben. Smooth fella. I picked him for that the first time I seen him. It's not that entirely. But it's wrong to take advantage of these people. Yeah, maybe you're right. Just that... Well, I worked with the general so long that I... I reckon I know it better than anybody, except you, how much this meant to him. But maybe it's best putting it off right now. Someday, maybe somebody will try his idea. I'll do it myself in two months. Well, you never know. The winds may not be right then. Most anything might happen. Or well, you might get so interested in this band that you give up the whole idea. Mr. Turlock. Huh? Don't let me interfere. I know your father would understand. You could just give up. Casey, that balloon out there is a sight to warm you to the bottom of your bank book. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered. We open tomorrow afternoon. Do you know they're coming in from all over the territory? They're walking, horseback, and buckboarding the whole thing. Tony, you and your sweet talk, and me and my sweet ear just sitting here sopping it all in. Look out! Get out of the way! The balloon's taking off! <laughs> Here. Hey, woman, you can't leave like this. We got a contract with you. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. I'll see you in St. Louis. Sorry? $3,000 down the drain. Folks coming for miles around to see this girl's act. We'll all end up being tarred and feathered. And he's sorry. Well, where do you think you're going? Well, to bring her back. Bring her back? How are you going to catch that balloon? The law of gravity. It goes up, must come down. With a little help, it comes down faster. I don't get that, Casey. No, but there's one law I do get. What's that? Advertising something you can't deliver. Found in, you have to jug, Tony. Casey, we weren't trying to fool nobody. It wasn't our fault she ducked out. We can make them see that. You think so? Sure I do. Then you better start riding yourself off in our speech, then. Speech? Because if Ben don't bring that girl back, you're going to be the one that goes out to face that audience. You're going to make them a nice, reasonable speech. That'll make them forget how far they come to see that girl's balloon act. And you know something? <laughs> I'm going to be watching you from the back of my wagon. I don't know what to do. We got these posters plastered all over town. We don't even have a balloon act. I know it, Tony. You know we had them printed up before our chicken flew the coop. I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe Ben will pick out some miracle out of his saddlebags. I sure wouldn't count on that, Casey. Now, listen. Most of the people coming in from the territories, they're families. We can talk to them. But now it's the singles in town, the men. They're going to get all liquored up. They're going to start shooting, let the animals out, burn up the tents. Who knows what else? Tony, do me a favor. Put your hand up here. Huh? Now you're ready to make your speech to those people. Oh.
Katie, all right? You had me worried. Hold it right there, Mr. Travis. Now, Katie, here you've had an accident. I've come to help you. You don't even seem glad to see me. What I had wasn't an accident, and you know it. The world is this. Any man that would hook a barometer and some springs in my air escape valve ought to be shot on the spot. I don't know. I'd say that was a pretty clever fellow, particularly for one who didn't know anything about balloons. The minute I hit a thousand feet, I couldn't do a thing. The valve opened and down I came. Maybe I did run out on you, but do you know how much this means to me? Why did you do it? I was going beautifully. Katie, to protect you. Well, I, uh, I took the precaution of removing the shells. Katie. Katie, you're an Eastern girl. You don't, you don't know the hazards of this country out here. What would happen if you'd gone another hundred miles? Why, why I had it fixed so I could get to you before it got dark. Listen, Katie, come back to the circus with me. Let me teach you about the dangers we have out here. And in case you're forced down again, you'll know how to take care of yourself. Then take your trip. You're not tricking me again, Mr. Travis. I'm blowing this balloon up and going on. If I'm forced down, I can take care of myself. Dangers. Where are all these dangers? That's, that's just a point, Katie. You don't know. What's all that for? Oh, uh, just checking for poisonous lizards. Really, now? Oh, no, they're here. They're here, all right. North wind. Very dangerous, no doubt. No. No, but if it changes to southerly during the night, you, uh, you wouldn't suspect a thing. You go right on working. And come morning, the storm blow you right out of the sky. Hogwash. You can probably expect visitors, too. We're, we're close enough. Cougars, maybe a coyote or two. What, no snakes? No, yeah, they're, they're snakes. Yeah. Indians, too. You know, the Blackfeet are very curious. When they see that balloon of yours. No, well, they'll, they'll be done all right. I'm sorry but I'm unimpressed. I think the only real danger around here tonight is you. Well, that's not too hard to take care of. You know, if, uh, if you want to make it through the night, I suggest you hop into that thing, pull the silk over your head, and stay there.
worse Indian than you were a coyote. That one's really amateur. Next. Indians, we have trouble. They heard my call and answered it. Maybe they'll answer mine. Hi! <laughs> oh, they're probably Blackfeet. Come on, get into the gondola. Down if they see a woman. Then maybe they'll pass. Maybe they haven't seen us. I think they already have. Here they come. There are only three. Well, the Blackfeet attacking a pyramid. Three, then six, then twelve, and so on. I could, if I could see the markings they're wearing, I'd, I'd know what we were in for. Then is it that bad? That's bad. It's worse. They're not Blackfeet, they're Paiutes. The chief leading them is... Pouchich. Me ka ta to want to talk. What's that mean? I don't know. Must be some new Indian saying. They're gone, I understand. Ben, if there are only three, why can't you just... Ah, they're out there, Katie. You just can't see them. Where? Well, the Paiutes are a wandering tribe. They're, they're probably wandering all over. Well, what are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Split up. Split up? Yeah, the, the Paiutes are the worst of all. They torture, burn at the stake. If we split up, there's a chance one of us will get out of here. I don't want to split up. I was wrong. I can't handle myself out here alone. I was awake all night. I'm afraid. Sorry, Katie, but we have a code of loyalty out here. You walked out on us. No, you're not. Just, just not worth the risk. I'm going to get out of here by myself. Then, then. Ben, please give me a chance. I'll change. I'll show loyalty. Six months, a year, ten years. I'll stay with you till the day you fire me. Oh, honest, Ben, you can believe me this time. All right, Katie. Get down and keep out of sight. Get out of sight. What are you doing? I'm preparing. Katie. In case there's trouble, start shooting. Chief, that man looks like Ben Trapp. Well, how can I tell? You know I'm nearsighted. You all right? Yeah, it is Ben. Boy, are we glad to see you. What are you shooting at us for? Tonawak! Tonawak! Uh, what Tonawak? Come on, speak English. We're lost out here. Where'd you get the balloon? Keep your voice down. I'm uh, trying to impress a girl. We're going to do white man die act. Ready? Ready. <laughs>
Get up. You mash my thumb, bitch. Jane's hand. Don't All right, come on. I'm a moccasin, Ben. Wait a minute. Oh, the moccasin. Get up for you. All right. All right. Right. Okay. Okay. Give me one. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, take a punch. Come on, go! I'm, uh, I'm taking the girl back to the circus with me. Give me 30 minutes to get out of here. So down on my heat. Yuck, so down on my heat. Thanks, Bernie. Ben. Oh, God, sorry, sorry. We want to go with you. I thought you were finally leading your tribe back home. I couldn't find them. What about the long ridge, the gentle winds, and the bending mesquite? I couldn't find them either. All right, I'll leave you a trail, but stay out of sight for four or five days until I can get things smoothed over. Four or five days? We're hungry. How are we going to eat? Well, hunt. Hunt? <laughs> Ben, you were wonderful. All right. Uh, to get out of something like that with the uh, Paiutes, the guy's just, just lucky. But Katie, our chief's given us 30 minutes to get out of here. You think we can get the balloon loaded? 30 minutes? That was one scared gal when you drove in here with her. Well, I think she's tame now. This ought to hold her for, say, uh, two months. That's just how long our contract runs with me. <laughs> it's just one thing, though. Pouchy could be showing up any day now. I think it's just as well she didn't get sight of him. Well, now, you let me handle that old Indian for you. I can't get over it, Ben. Using Pouchy and those, those moth-eating braids of his the way you did? <laughs> but that gal's nobody's fool. How'd you ever get away with it? It's a, it's a good question. So oh, man. <laughs> I said four or five days. Ben, we're starving. Clarence shot a squirrel, but it was awful skinny. All right, go into the cook tent, but keep out of sight. Katie, it's almost time for you to go on. I hardly had a chance to thank you for saving my life. Don't bother. No, it was one of the most heroic deeds I've ever seen. The way you stood them off alone, single-handed. You know, actually, Katie, these weren't really very tough Indians. They were. I saw them. Well, uh, thanks. Look, you better hurry. I'll, I'll see you later. Ben, I just want you to know what a difference this makes between us. After all, you've dealt honestly and fairly with me. And on top of that, you saved my life. That's a hard debt to repay. Don't even try, Katie. I just want you to know that from now on, 
I intend to be as honest and fair with you as you've been with me. Nice, that's... that's very nice. Are you ready? Yes. She's all ready. Ladies and gentlemen, the TNT Circus presents the greatest circus act in the whole USA. Fearless Katie, the balloon girl. Are you ready, Miss Katie? All ready, Mr. Thompson. Then take her away. I just couldn't leave without warning you. Those three terrible, bloodthirsty, unmerciful, wandering Paiutes are hiding in your cook tent, throwing out chicken bones. I figure this makes us even. But I'm not really mad when you play St. Louis. I'll show you Katie. <laughs> Can you figure women, huh? <laughs> oh, Casey, I, I guess we're just going to have to look on the bright side of this. I looked on that side. It's even darker over there. I wouldn't say that. You, Why, you still got your signs. Yeah! She won't be able to take those signs off of there either. <laughs> Wherever that girl goes, to New York, Norfolk, Fargo, Chicago, she'll be advertising the TNT Circus. <laughs> hey! 